The rate at which we invest usually depends on the rate at which we're earning money. But what happens if we get a lump sum? Well, we've got two choices. Either we invest all of it in one go, or we drip feed it into markets gradually over time. Now, the question is, which is best? And the answer is not as clear cut as you might think. We have to describe it in terms of probability. So let's take a look at that in a bit more detail. This is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. The trouble is, when you have a lump sum to invest, it's really scary. So the question you ask yourself with a lump sum is, should I first of all dip my toe into markets, or should I just plunge straight in and invest everything? If markets looked like this period from 2003 to 2007, then we'd have nothing to worry about. The S&P 500 rose by 16% every year up to that end point. But if you'd invested at the top, you'd have lost almost 60% of your capital. Let's just imagine that for a moment. You invest a million and you end up with about $400,000 left. That would be a devastating experience. And it would take a great deal of discipline not to sell on the way down. So one alternative is to drip feed your money into markets in case there's a crash. We'll look at some really simple examples to get an intuitive feel for when drip feed is best or lump sum investing is best. So on one hand, we'll look at investing a lump sum of £120,000 immediately, and then we hold that investment for 10 years. Or we'll drip feed into the market at £1,000 per month. So after 10 years, that £120,000 will be fully invested. The first case is pretty obvious. The price is shown on the top, and the number of shares we buy each month is shown on the bottom. If we invest our £120,000 immediately, that would buy us 1,200 shares straight away. But our monthly investment of £1,000 will initially buy us 10 shares. But what you can see is that the number of shares we can buy gradually falls, so that in total we can only buy 791 shares, because we were continually buying at a higher price. So in this case, lump sum investing would have been better, in a regime of rising prices. The other obvious case is when share prices are continually falling. As before, the immediate purchase would have bought you 1,200 shares. But as the share price falls, you'll gradually buy more shares. Until at the end, you're buying 25 shares for every £1,000 payment. And in this case, drip feeding will buy 1,825 shares. So when markets are falling, drip feed investing is better. But what if instead of having a trend, prices just wobble around some constant value? In this case, we'd have bought at the bottom of the cycle, which means that lump sum investing would have got a better price overall for the shares. And you can see that lump sum investing would have bought more shares and would have had a higher final value. If instead we'd have started at the top of a cycle, then the lump sum would have bought at a very high price relative to the rest of the cycle. And in this case, drip feed investment would have been better. And if we combine those two scenarios, in other words, we've got a drift over time upwards, then over a long period of time, the drift beats the wobble. So now let's look at some real markets to see which scenario they match most closely. This is the S&P 500 over a 140 year period. And you can see it's pretty similar to that drift plus wobble example that we saw. Whether we win or lose over some investment horizon depends on the length of that horizon. Over a one-year period, the probability of a positive return is just 64%. And over 50 years, which might be a typical investment horizon over your entire life, you're almost certain to have a positive return for the US S&P 500. For the UK market, if we look at the FTSE 100, we don't have such a long history as the S&P 500 in the US. But using a decade-long horizon, lump sum investing was better 64% of the time. And we can see why if we look at those 10-year returns. If you see blue, that means a positive return over the previous 10 years. If you see red, that means a negative return. There was one long period just after the financial crisis when you would have lost money over an entire decade. And this also occurred during two shorter periods in the late 1970s. Using the very long US time series, we can see during the 1940s there was a dramatic period during which there would have been decade-long returns that were negative. But you can see that most of the time the graph is blue. 
So the odds of getting a positive return when you invest over a decade is usually positive. Now let's look at an even more sophisticated analysis by Vanguard. Being an American organization, they love three-letter acronyms. So lump sum investing is LSI. Drip feed investing is called dollar cost averaging, which they label DCA. And for their analysis, they invest a million in the local markets. And they look at three separate countries, the US, the UK and Australia. So either they invest that million straight away and hold the portfolio for a decade, or alternatively, they invest over a period of 6, 12, 18, 24, 30 or 36 months and then hold that portfolio until the 10 years is up. And they compare the end balance for the LSI portfolio and for the DCA portfolio. And what they found was remarkably consistent across countries and across asset allocations. Lump sum investing was better two thirds of the time. That was true in the US, in the UK and in Australia. As well as looking at the binary outcome of which strategy was best, Vanguard present data on the size of the outperformance. And these are the percentiles of that distribution for the three different countries. I think it's easier to understand if we look at a graph. The UK's in the middle in green. The black line shows you which strategy was best. If we're above the line, then lump sum wins. And if we're below the line, then drip feed investing wins. The black line in the middle of the colour blocks is the median. Half the cases were above this value and half the cases were below. So the median represents a typical example. But what's really clear from this is that there's a huge dispersion around that outcome. In other words, it's very uncertain whether the lump sum would win or drip feed would win, even though it won in the typical case. And those tails you see below and above the colour boxes capture 20% of the cases. And for the UK, you can see that there were many cases in which the lump sum actually lost out. So the results aren't quite as clear cut as you might expect from just looking at which strategy wins most often. Vanguard repeated the analysis in 2016 and republished it with some fancier looking tables. They also renamed the strategies. So lump sum investing is immediate investing and drip feed investing is called systematic investing. But again, what we can see is roughly the same message. Lump sum investing wins about two thirds of the time, but the magnitude of the outperformance is not very big. It's around 2% in each country. But again, they found that the asset allocation didn't matter, whether it was pure equity, pure fixed income, or 50-50 equity fixed income. They still found immediate investing was better most of the time, because both of these markets tend to trend upwards gradually over time. And again, Vanguard shows us the percentiles. In this case, they've split it up into 10 deciles. So the first decile on the left is the 10% of worst performance periods and so on up to the best performing periods on the right hand side. And in the first two or three deciles, systematic outperformed immediate investing. So lump sum investing would have won in those cases. But from the fourth to the 10th decile, that's the remaining 60% of cases, lump sum investing would have outperformed. And again, that's for all three countries. But you can see that the level of outperformance isn't particularly large. It never gets far beyond 10% either way. And Vanguard's conclusion is that if you fear a market crash and you go down the drip feed investing route, you should invest your money within one year. The reason being that you don't hold your money in cash for too long because the returns on cash are very low. And if you are going to drip feed your money, they suggest two ways in which to do this. One is to continually put your money into your target asset allocation. So say, for example, you want 60% equity and 40% bonds. You'll always top up your portfolio to those levels. Or if you want to go down a more cautious route, you could put all of your money into the fixed income portion of your portfolio, that's bonds, which tend to have a much lower risk, and then gradually transition your money into your final equity allocation. But ultimately, the method that you choose depends on what your view is about what markets are going to do. If you think there's a big correction coming, then drip feed investment would be a better choice. If you think markets will continue trending upwards, then lump sum investing will be the better choice. But rest assured that neither you nor anyone else has any clue as to which is going to happen. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, and many of you tell us that you do, then why not consider supporting us on Patreon? It's very easy. 
if you pay as little as $5 a month or more, you get access to me live on a Q&A session which occurs regularly, but also you get to become part of the creation process. We pay a lot more attention to our Patreon supporters when it comes to choosing which content to create. So let me just read out the list of current supporters which we have, which is now getting very long, so I'm going to read it. Lee, Andrew Trott, Alan Popescu, Mark Hayward, Steve Lambert, Elizaveta Sheforestova, Adam, Adam Gilmore, Hugh Valentine, Alex Kemp, Gintautus Gerulatis, Louis Mayer, Corn Dutois, and Robert Gurara. So thank you all for your support and thanks for listening.